Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today's video, we are going to talk about the second assumption that we make before creating a linear regression model. In our previous video, we discussed about the first assumption, which is the linearity uh, among the independent variables and the dependent variables, that there is a linear relationship. So in today's video, we are going to talk about the second assumption, which is basically there should be a statistical independence of errors. In particular, there is no correlation between errors. First, I will tell you uh, this thing on this whiteboard, how it actually works and how we can uh, make sure that uh, there is no correlation between uh, our errors. And then I'll uh, jump onto the Python code. So let's get started. So here we are talking about the errors. What do you mean by errors? When we say errors, it's, so here we are mentioning about errors. Errors means, let's say when, we, uh, let me take an example. Let's say uh, I have a data what, um, is like something like this, Y1, Y2. These are my uh, uh, pre, uh, target variable values, Y5 and let's say Yn. And the variable which we want to predict. And let's say, and our uh, we are uh, for our linear regression, we follow this formula y is equal to mx plus b or c whatever you can write it down so this is the linear regression formula that we follow so what we actually do in linear regression first i'm going to uh, make you understand when i say error what does it mean by errors so um, errors for to calculate errors error is basically the difference between the actual value and the predicted value so assume that uh, for these uh, for these values, respectively, we calculated, uh, let's say y1 hat, y2 hat, and y3 hat, and and so on, and yn hat. So, uh, hat values are my uh, predicted values, and y1, y2, y3 are, these are my actual value for my target variable. So, error is basically the difference between the predicted value and the uh, actual value. So, which is basically, uh, so let's say if I have to calculate error between, error is like, I mean, uh, how much my predicted value is deviating from the actual value. So, how much is the difference? So, for uh, if I take for this example, y1 and y, y1 hat, so we can write it like this way, y1 hat. So, and this can, which is the error one, let's say error one, or we can say e1. Fine. So this is basically errors. So uh, this can be calculated in different ways. Uh, in some methods, we take the absolute value and in some method, we can take the, uh, basically the square of the actual minus predicted and so on. But idea, um, idea here is that, let's say if I have calculated error terms like at error one, for like um, the difference between y1 and y1 hat is let's say assume that is e1. The similar way uh, there is difference between e2. This is e3 and so on. Let's say I have calculated these errors and how these errors are calculated. These are calculated actual minus predicted value. Now I want to make sure that between these values uh, e1, e2, e3 and so on en there is no autocorrelation, there is no uh, correlation between these values. So this is the second assumption that our model makes. So how we can uh, make sure that they, how we can make sure that uh, our model uh, has, has uh, basically do not have any correlation between its errors or has a statistical independence between its errors. So for this, we, uh, we basically, get, do a test which is basically termed as Durbin Watson test, which is uh, let me write it down, which is Durbin Watson test. So in this, what we uh, what we do is we calculate we calculate the value of d. D is Durbin variable, basically Durbin Watson variable. So we uh, using these terms e1, e2, e3, en, we calculate it. And what is the formula for it? Formula for it is let's say sigma i is equal to 2, 2 n. Let's say we have n terms and let's say e i minus e i minus 1 
So EI represents the error at the ith value and EI minus one represents error at I minus value. That means previous error. And uh, take uh, take the difference between them, scale them out and then take the summation and divide it by summation of I is equal to one to M and e, EI to the scale. So this, this is the formula. So when we have values with, uh, sorry, when we have these values with us, E1, E2, E3, EM, we will put these values into this formula and we will calculate the value of D. And if the value of D uh, comes out between, let's say in this range, 1.5 to 2.5, then we can say that there is no autocorrelation or there is no uh, correlation. No correlation among errors. So, and if any values, uh, if any value which is less than 1.5, less than 1.5, or uh, greater than 2.5, then there is certain uh, correlation among the errors. So this is the second assumption and this is the theory. I hope you get it. So basically idea here is that first we get, uh, first we calculate the errors and then using this Durban Watson test formula, we put the values into it. We calculate the value of D and uh, we check what is the value of D based on the value of D we decide that there is any correlation between errors or no. Now let's move on to the Python uh, code example. In Python, this can be done with two lines of code very easy because most of the things are already available in our library. So this is our uh, second assumption which I talked about that there is a, a statistical independence of errors. Basically, there is no correlation among the errors. So uh, here is uh, what I have done. From stats model dot formula dot API, I have imported OLS. Now, what is OLS? OLS is basically ordinary least square regression. It is basically a common technique for estimating coefficient of linear regression equation, which describe the relationship between one or more independent quantitative variables and a dependent variable. So basically, uh, with this OLS, we can find uh, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, we can find the relationship between our uh, uh, quantitative variables and the dependent variables. And we can estimate uh, the coefficient. Coefficient means uh, the value of coefficient M1, M2, M3, and so on. So what I have done here is uh, that I just imported that OLS. And inside that, I have given this as uh, the relation. As the relation means uh, this is my target variable. And I am using uh, the same in uh, same data set which I have used in my previous video. So this is our target variable power output, ambient temperature, volume, ambient pressure, relative humidity. These are our um, these are our uh, independent variable. And my data is my data frame, and I am doing dot fit. Now this will give me an object model. And when I do this model dot res uh, R, R -E -S -I -D, basically it means model dot residuals. Model dot residuals will calculate values for me, which are E1, E2, E3. So that means this line, uh, let me write it like this way. Uh, let me print this, print model. So what it will do, so you can see, see, see here. So now these are the error terms. Uh, we have calculated using model dot residual. This will give me, so you can think of these as E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, En, whatever is the number of terms we have. So these are my error terms. So what I will do, and there is a, a method, Durbin Watson method is available in, in our library, in this stat models library. So I will create an object and pass this residual value. So if you want to take a look on it, you can see the signature of this as well. So you can see that Durbin Watson, it takes the residuals and calculate the Durbin Watson statistic. So basically we want to calculate it. So in Python, um, this is only two line of code, but um, if I would have jumped directly on this, you might not be able to relate it very closely, but I hope now, 
it will make sense to you because I have uh, shown it on whiteboard how the things actually working behind uh, behind these methods, the already method, already written method. So if I calculate uh, this, you can see that uh, the value is coming as 1.99, which is between 1.5 and 2.5. So any value which between 1.5 and 2.5, this make this tells us that there is no uh, not much autocorrelation between our error terms or or there is a uh, required or sufficient statistical independence among the error terms or residuals so residuals and error terms are synonyms you can understand in that way so that means there is no relationship or a very uh, or considerable amount of relationship between our error terms if the value is between 1.5 and 2.5 any value which is less than 1.5 or any value which is greater than 2.5 then that means that there is some correlation between our error terms so we should not consider linear regression for that particular data set so that's all for today's video that's what we want to achieve in this video that uh, how to check that uh, there is a statistical independence among the error terms before creating a linear regression model for a particular data set. So that's all for today's video. Thank you guys. Uh, stay tuned for more such video. Please like, uh, subscribe my channel and share it with your friends. Till the next video. Bye bye. Take care.